So what we were doing is the first two steps of the problem of trying to find the field due to an infinite plane of surface current in the y z plane. And that surface current has a value k. But we already know from an earlier problem that an infinite line current on the z axis uh, produces a magnetic field that is that current divided by 2 pi rho a hat phi. So then how can we use this information to simplify this problem? The, the first two steps that we're going to do are related to that. What we need to do then is divide this surface up into stripes. And each stripe we're going to treat like an infinite line current, because it is. And it's going to have current instead of i. Oh, you can't see what I write at the top there. Uh, it's going to have a current i equals that current density times dy prime, because our, in, our uh, variable of integration is going to be along the y direction. We're going to use y prime to denote that. And the position of this, instead of being at x, y equals 0, 0, like it is in the original case, it's going to be offset along y by some distance, y prime. We need to figure out how to represent this when it is offset by that distance. The first step is to figure out the value of rho. So instead of rho, we're going to move this into Cartesian coordinates because when we have an infinite plane like this, that's a really nice Cartesian geometry because it's a constant surface of one of the Cartesian variables, but it's not a constant surface of any of the spherical or cylindrical variables. So that's always a clue. If you have something that's a constant surface of one of the variables in a coordinate system, that is almost always, in fact, pretty much always, the coordinate system you should be using, the one where you have a constant surface. So. If I have um, this, if I have this magnetic field, but I would like to have it move around, I'm going to write it as dH, and the current is going to be replaced by k dy prime, because I'm going to do an integral. So it's, this is the differential element of the magnetic field. I'm still going to have a one over two pi. But this rho value, remember the value of rho when this is centered at the origin, rho is the square root of x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared. Because these are the x and y coordinates of the observation point. You need a little bit more visibility there. And these are the x and y coordinates of the source distribution. So if I want to write this expression for an arbitrary location in the y direction, I replace this y minus 0 by a y minus y prime. So then the, I have the magnitude of my magnetic field differential element here. It's going to be x squared plus y minus y prime squared. So far, so good. But now I need to figure out how to replace this phi-directed unit vector. And that's a little complicated because phi is centered around the z-axis. If I move it over, the phi-directed unit vector at some other position, y prime, is not going to show up in the right place. It is also kind of doing a lot of geometry in your head to try to write down directly what the direction of this replacement unit vector needs to be. So here's the way that I solved it. I know that 
in spherical coordinates, a hat z, that's not a z, that's an x, a hat z cross a hat rho is equal to a hat phi. In my offset system, where I'm trying to figure out what the offset field is, a hat z is the same. And it's pretty easy for me to write a new value for a hat rho. And then I, if I do this cross product, I'll have my replacement value for a hat phi. So here's how I write my alternative a hat rho. That unit vector is going to be x minus zero a hat x plus y minus y prime a hat y divided by the magnitude of that, which is the same row replacement square root again. So divided by all of this, x squared plus y minus y prime squared. And this is my new, I'm gonna write this as a hat row prime. because That's my new offset radial distance from the source. And if I want to do my cross product there, a hat, yeah, you can still see that, a hat z cross a hat rho prime, what I get is z cross x. So z cross x is going to give me a minus y, nope, positive y. So I'm going to end up with x a hat y, and z cross y gives me a minus x. So it's going to be minus y minus y prime a hat x all over that same uh, distance x squared plus y minus y prime squared like that. So to put this expression into my differential magnetic field contribution, I'm going to notice that I already have row in here one time, replacement row. So instead of making it complicated, I'm just going to put it in parentheses and remove the square root. And then on the top, I'm going to have this vector x a hat y minus y minus y prime a hat x. Now, I am ready to evaluate. There, now you can see the whole thing. Now I'm ready to evaluate the integral and it's all set up because I know the bounds are going to be from y equals minus infinity to infinity. And now it's just a question of how to crunch those numbers. <laughs>